I was writing some TypeScript for one of my internships and it started raining pretty hard. And in this apartment I have a huge window, so I kept looking out of it and I kept thinking of windows. And most people, I think, will think of the Windows operating system in that situation, but I think of Vim windows. So I decided to make a tutorial on them. It's probably pretty weird to think about any kind of software when you look at a piece of glass. I feel like you should just be thinking about, well, I don't know, not software, I should go outside. But here are some window commands. So what is a window fundamentally? It's basically just a view on a buffer, and a buffer is just a file loaded into memory. You can have like many different buffers open, and you don't necessarily have to be looking at a buffer. Like You can have one open in the background. When you're editing multiple files, for instance, and you're switching between the buffers, like there are many buffers loaded in memory, but you're not looking at them. And you can also have multiple views, multiple windows on a single buffer. So for instance, if I start editing something in this file, and then I want to create a split, you can either type split or vsplit, VSP, to create a vertical split, or you can do control W and then V, and then that'll vertical split. And you can see if I start editing this file, it'll actually update both of them. And that's because we're editing the same buffer, the same text in memory, um, but we have multiple views on it. So here's, here's some basic movement commands. Everything to do with Windows is going to be prefixed with Control W. It has its own like dedicated colon commands, but it's usually easier to use Control W. So we can actually also record these actions into a macro. So I already showed a vertical split, but Control W, V will do that. Then Control W, H, J, K, L will move between them. So now we have that. You can use Control W and then the back and forth arrows to resize buffers or the plus and minus to resize them like vertically and horizontally. They're, they're the two different things. They're, they're what you'd expect. And then we can also do Control W and then S to just get a horizontal split. Control W, J to move into it. And let's close our macro there. Q. And then we can do at W, boom, at W, at W. Nice little spiral thing going. And then to close these, you can do, I don't actually close windows very often. I'm kind of forgetting how to do that. Qual, oh no, that just quits everything. Control W, X, no, Control W, C, yeah, close. Ah, oh, what a new moment, how could I forget that? I usually just like leader Q to quit out of them, um, but I wanted to use this specific window binding. Another very useful one is Control W and then backtick, but that'll require me to open, not backtick, sorry, caret. That'll split with the alternate file. I don't have an alternate file right now, so I'll open something up. Let's do ops.lua. So if you don't know, you can switch between files with control and then caret, which is shift six. So you can switch like that. But you can also do control W and then caret, and that'll split with your last file. So you can see we have this empty buffer and then that last one. You can minimize and maximize windows also with, let's see, I think it's control W and then underscore yeah so that makes it like the smallest size possible that's not something I need to do all that often because usually when I want something to be like the full height so for instance I open the help for windows help window sure and then I want this to not like have this little annoying thing down there you can do control W O and this makes that the only buffer in view it kind of closes all of them you can also just type only Another interesting thing you can do is use Z and then count to set your window to a specific height. I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to do this, but someone in the comments can probably tell you. So if you do Z and then like 10, for instance, enter, you can see it sets the, the window to a smaller size. And then to maximize it, um, we can do Control W and then underscore. And then there's also an interesting one that'll let you kind of equal out all the sizes of your windows. So if we use that macro from earlier, Let's do 10 at W. We have a bunch of things, and then I'll do Control W equals sign. Uh, that didn't really work, I don't think. 
So those are all the major useful window manipulation commands. Honestly though, I kind of like some practical like advice from tutorial people about what they use. I think a lot of this stuff is like for me a little bit gimmicky, and that's not to say it can't be useful for some people, but having like multiple views, at least like on a small screen, it can get pretty crowded and hard to read, and I kind of like to see larger context. I'm sure you could like build a habit of having eight panes open at once and being able to, I don't know, compartmentalize and just not need to see the whole file. But yeah, I kind of like to just work at one to maybe two files at a time. That doesn't mean there aren't times when I want to switch between things quickly. And I have a couple binds set up for that. So I do leader S and leader capital S to switch to alternate file with leader S. And then leader capital S will split with the alternate file. So that's really nice when I want to just like quickly work between two different files. And that's like the most common use case for me in terms of Windows. The other stuff, like I use it from time to time, but not super frequently to be honest. And there is some like nice stuff you can do with certain macros if you want to be really flashy. Like there's some really cool stuff you can do. You can set windows to any size you want. Uh, with Control W prefix bar and Control W prefix like minus or plus, there are other ways to control it. So you could do some crazy thing like represent uh, the Fibonacci sequence with like a Vim window spiral. I showed you like that kind of nested thing before. You could you could make that like an official spiral. Um, and there's many cool things you can do with it. It's not the least inefficient way to edit multiple files, that's for sure. Like prefix hjkl, pretty good way to edit multiple files. It can be a little bit cumbersome on screen space, but yeah, definitely not a terrible workflow altogether. Um, yeah, I think that's all I really have to say about Windows and Vim. They're, they're quite useful. Another thing to consider is like terminal. Um, I didn't show it all that much, but a really common remap you want is just being able to escape in terminal mode so you can go right to like window switching commands because by default you have to send some weird like control backslash or some nonsense. So some people love to use Vim's window splitting and everything to work with multiple terminals. I don't myself usually do that and the reason is because I have tmux running 100% of the time, and basically it works the exact same way as the vim window commands, except the prefix is like control space for me instead of control w, and other than that it's like basically identical. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I'll see you next time.